for inviting me to your homes. Tonight, a mystery, a conundrum, a puzzle, an arcanum, a quandary, tell suspense, action, I'm a tragedy. I ask you to imagine a top rating current affairs show anchored megastar. No, not her, the one with the beard. <clears throat> imagine this person has talent, a sense of humour and sex appeal. Well, close your eyes and imagine. <clears throat> and imagine he's been doing this show for about a year. And now here's the mystery. Here's the conundrum. Here's the puzzle. Here's the riddle. Why hasn't this person, the star of stage and screen, and book, thank you, Dermot, Dermot, my producer, and book, why hasn't this man got his own Tonight Show? Or his own Today Show? Why doesn't he host nature documentaries? Host the Logies? Star on his own soapy? Maybe a country hutch? <clears throat> Hunching away. The flying hunches. Why are Australian TV executives so blinkered? I'll give you the reason. It's not pleasant. It's not easy to say this, and I'm not grandstanding. But the answer is, in one word, unbridled, unrestrained, unfettered jealousy and envy. All right, let's call that ten words. And to make the mystery worse, much, much worse, I ask you to watch the following. An hour of television. Stay with it, stick through it, I warn you, it's not pretty, but if I couldn't do better with my hands tied behind my back than what you're about to see, then my name is not Alfred Hunchcock. <laughs> was it who told the truth about Japanese tourists? I've obtained exclusive footage which proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that so-called Japanese tourists are secreting handfuls of dirt on their person before leaving the country. By a program of stealth, they are gradually whittling away Australia. Soon, there'll be nothing left. Shame, Australia, shame. Who said it? I'm Aaron Hunch. Hunch is back. <laughs> Who was it who pulled the plug on people with big noses? Quite frankly, people with big noses, with ugly faces and hooters like anteaters, get up my nose. In my view, there's only one solution for these physically disgusting, proboscis-ridden social menaces. Chemical castration. Who said it? I'm Aaron Hunch. Hunch is back. Who was it that lifted the lid on the slingshot issue? See this? It's a slingshot, but not the same as the slingshots you and I remember. This one kills. And if you don't believe me, watch this. Good. Whoops. That's life. I'm Aaron Hunch. Hunch is back. On last night's Hunch is Back, I ran as our cover story an exclusive report on a man who I described as a sexual monster of the worst kind. A man who had, according to my sources, scaled the wall of the zoo on a nightly basis to have illicit sexual liaison with a non-consenting juvenile panda. I called him the panda panderer, a pandaphile. Here's what I said. The name of this monster is Morris Jeremiah Carpello of 28 Studsworthy Road, Glebe, New South Wales. The man is a monster. Father of four children aged between 7 and 15 and with a good job as a local high school teacher for the past eight years, Smith has been leading a Jekyll and Hyde existence. Well, that's a story we ran last night and quite frankly, I've got to say, we were wrong. Unfortunately, our researchers picked the wrong Mr. MJ Carpello. I hope that any of the remarks I made, including sexual monster of the worst kind, deviant, or chemical castration did not cause any offence. I apologise to the late Mr MJ Carpello, his widow, and condolences to his relatives. 
Which leads us into tonight's story. Suicide. Why would a well-respected high school teacher run a hose from his exhaust pipe into his car, get in, close the windows, and start the engine? I'm Darren Hunch. That's life. <laughs> Good evening Australia, Navy Universe, hunch by name, hunch by nature, and I've got a hunch that this show's soon going to be going head on with Yana Vince, A Current Affair, and if that happens, I'll be happy to match Yana, story for story, show for show, sex symbol for sex symbol, <laughs> when it comes to being a sex kitten, I can be just as sexy as the next Yana, and if you don't believe me, watch this, hey spunky, hey baby, get off of my cloud. Why don't you come up and see me sometime? Is that a gun in your pocket? Or are you just happy to see me? Voulez-vous coucher avec moi ce soir? I'm a steamroller, baby. Get your, get your ya-yas out. Pretty haughty stuff. I'm Darren Hunch. That's life. I'm Darren Hunch. Tonight, a story so shocking, so bizarre, that even this tough, bearded media giant is horrified. I don't like to be the one to say it, and I'm not saying it just for ratings purposes, but Neighbours is not real. That's right, Neighbours is a fake, a fantasy, a hoax. Our investigations reveal there is no Ramsey Street. That's right, no Ramsey Street. The so-called Robinson family does not exist. Kylie Minogue is an actress, Jason Donovan an actor, and the list goes on and on and on. Yep, that's it. The whole thing's a fake, a fraud. And if you don't believe me, ask yourself this question. When was the last time you saw a current affair story on Neighbours? When was the last time you saw a story on Neighbours about talking dolphins or, or queue-jumping Asian pedophiles losing licences? Where's the shame file on Neighbours? I don't like saying it, but Neighbours is nothing more than entertainment. I'm Darren Hunch. That's life. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm Darren Hunch. Well, she's been called Princess Piggy, the large chocolate royal, Lady Lard Bucket. She's accused of spending too much time away from her baby and not enough time attending to her royal duties. Well, enough's enough. Fair crack of the whip. Tonight, live, a first, a scoop, a coup, one other box, as advertised on this show only and no other show, an exclusive interview with Princess Ferganese of Fergie. Fergie. We'll have that interview after this break. For over 200 years, drinkers of distinction have selected only the finest in traditional scotch. Made using traditional Highland brewing techniques, mixed in a bath, blended in a bath, the duck in the bath. From the house of duck, the black duckless. You know, I've been drinking some years, and when I drink, I always try to get duckless. The black duckless. If you want to get duckless, get the black duckless. Pure malted duck that puts a quack in your kilt. <laughs> Welcome back. I'm talking with the Royal Highness, the Princess Ferganese of Fergie. Good to talk to you, Princess Fergie. Great to talk to you in Australia, Darren. Your Highness, you've been accused of eating too much. Does that trouble you? Well, it's silly, really. I'm actually quite a picky eater. There's a million things I won't eat. Like, um, is, that, is that the Junior Burger? Thank, yeah. thank you, Sven. But, um, there's a million things I won't eat, like... Um, well, Sven, what was that, that thing I didn't eat the other night? Oh, yes, a, a, a live goldfish. The boys in the ski team, ski team were mucking around the other night, and I simply refused to eat a goldfish. You're forgetting you've been accused of spending too much time away from Beatrice. Beatrice? Your daughter? Oh, sorry, yes. yes. She's absolutely fabulous. You know, she's, she's so um, baby-like. Actually, I'm, I'm bringing her home a little gift, a McDonald's pen and a McDonald's colouring book. Yeah. Your Highness, there's been a lot of allegations that you've been mugging around, enjoying yourself, having a good time, living off the fat of the taxpayer. Yes, well, well, Dan, that really hurts. I, I don't need the fat off the taxpayer. I mean, uh, everything I do is charity work. At the moment, I'm here skiing for charity, 
and I'll soon be going on to a yacht for charity and then to some balls for charity and then having my hair done for charity. I mean, charity work is, is quite, quite important for me. I'm also president of Freedom From Hunger. All right, we've got to take a break there. I'll be back with more of this world-shattering exclusive interview in just a moment. Good evening, Australia, nay the world. I'm Aaron Hunch. This morning, one of the daily papers ran a story about me. In the story, a fellow journalist accused me of having no sense of humour. Darren has no funny bone, it said. The journalist won MR Strong. Well, Mr Strong, you're wrong. I have got a sense of humour. I once told the riddle in 1975, and last year, at a dinner party, I actually told a joke. That's right, a joke. And if you don't believe me, listen to this one. Why did a queue-jumping Asian tourist pedophile with three drink-driving convictions cross the road? Answer? Because he saw a hunched camera crew coming towards him. Get it? And who was it who said I didn't have a sense of humour? I'm Darren Hunch. That's funny. Good evening, Australia. I'm Aaron Hunch. I'm shocked. I'm shocked and horrified. I'm shocked horrified and appalled. In fact, I'm so shocked, horrified and appalled, I've dropped my thesaurus. There are people here in Australia today, as I speak, who are perpetrating a monumental rip-off on an unsuspecting public. These people, they're putting themselves up as watchdogs of public morality and taste. Yet, in reality, they're making millions of dollars out of gullible Australians. And there's one who stands alone as the most notorious example of these heartless bastards leeching off the misfortunes of others. And who is he? I'll tell you, it's Hunch at Seven. I confronted him right here in the studios today. Well, Mr Hunch, what do you got to say for yourself? Look, I've never worked so hard in my life. I would be prepared to do anything, anything, for sensationalism, the ratings, to see the demise of neighbours. Good evening, Australia. Sometimes it's not easy sitting here. Sometimes it's not easy sitting anywhere, especially if you've got piles. But I, I do something that really hits home, to me personally. I often criticised other networks, other programs on this network for paying criminals to make exclusive appearances on their shows, to get their exclusive stories. I often said it, you've heard me say it, I've heard me say it, I won't pay criminals to come on this show. If they want to come on for free, that's fine. I won't reward them for their criminal activities. And if that costs me ratings, well, I may have to review that policy. <laughs> for the time being, it's come to my attention that I, Darren Hunch, have been convicted of a criminal offence. That's right, I've served time for contempt of court. Technically, that makes me a criminal. And true to my policy, I refuse to pay myself. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, take a look at this. This is last week's paycheck to me. And I'm ripping it up. That's right, Australia. I refuse to pay myself. You saw it first. I'm Darren Hunt. That's life. Servant, well a bank cash and check and a piece is missing. <laughs> what do you mean now? I reckon that stinks. <laughs> there, Hunch. Welcome back. A story hot of the press. Banks. Institutions that are no more than licenses to print money. You'd reckon they go out of their way to help the average Joe Globe. But no. Apparently they refuse to accept proper legal tender. For example, a check. Just because a tiny little piece is missing and it may have been stuck together pretty well, I think, with sticky tape, well, I think that stinks. I'm having nothing more to do with banks. And if you don't believe me, have a look at this. This is my savings passport, and I'm ripping it up. Sayonara banks. Farewell banks. I can do nicely on my own. Thank you very much. I'm Aaron Hunch. That's life. share certificates. These are my share certificates, my own personal share certificates. Well, quite frankly, I don't want them. I don't deserve them. And I'm going to eat them right now. If you don't believe me, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Aaron Hunt. That's life. <laughs> Good evening, humanity. I'm Darren Hunt. I'm ashamed, nay, I'm appalled to have to report to you, Australia, that another TV program on this network, not worthy of the name news, has gone in for a cheap publicity stunt, sunk to the bottom of the pork barrel by offering its viewers, if there are any, free dinner at a fish cafe. Nothing more than a cheap rating stunt. 
A giveaway. Buying viewers. Shame, eyeball, shame. <laughs> and you know what the saddest thing about these stunts are? They cheapen the genuine, sincere offers elsewhere on TV. I'm speaking, of course, about lunch with Hunch. <laughs> by answering just a simple current affairs question, you can be flying to Bangkok, pedal by rickshaw to the best Asian restaurant where you can have lunch with me and my parole officer. Cue jumping, child molesting, Asian tourist rock spiders need not enter. This community service, Lunch with Hunch, is not the tacky little publicity stunt being pulled by that other news service. This is a sincere, genuine television office. I'm Darren Hunch. That's lunch. Good evening, world. Good evening, universe. I'm Aaron Hunch. Hunch by name. Hunch by nature. Tonight on Hunch's Back, an exclusive, a first, a coup, a ratings boomer, it's come to my attention that some other current affairs shows on other networks hosted by raven-haired women who aren't as attractive as everybody makes out anyway, that these shows are claiming exclusive interviews with singers who are clearly deceased. I refer specifically to Roy Orbison. This is nothing more than a cheap rating stunt. Particularly cheap when tonight on Hunter's Back, I've got a scoop. Elvis Presley. That's right. Elvis the King Alive. And how do I know that? Well, I'm talking to him. That's right, talking to the King Elvis in person. Mr. Presley, it's good to have you here. Uh, good day. Good day. People are going to find it hard to believe that you are indeed Elvis Presley, the King of Rock and Roll. Are you sure you're the great king? The one and only Elvis Presley. But to right, but... Oh, well, that's good enough for this bearded investigative mogul. Elvis, can you tell me where have you been for the last few years? Oh, I've been hanging around... Um... Uh, uh, but... Uh, but... Grace... Grace Brothers. Lands. Grace Lands. Yeah, that's it. That's my way. Can you prove beyond a shadow of a doubt that you are the only true Elvis Presley, the king of rock and roll? Well, you like this? Well... One for the money, two for the show. Uh, Three to get Mr. ready Presley. now, Bob Mr. Presley, oh, thank you. don't you... Well, there you have it, Stop the honest... <laughs> you have it, the honest shadow of a doubt, a ratings winner, an exclusive, a coup. You won't see that one on a current affair. I'm Darren Hunt. That's all. Coming up on Hunch, the signs are there for anyone to see. Glazed eyes, incoherence, absolutely no motivation for work. They lie around all day expecting to be waited on hand and foot by honest, hard-working Australians. And if you ask them straight out what's wrong, one thing's for sure, they won't tell you the truth. It's a question that has to be asked. Are your pets on drugs? I'm Darren Hunch. That's life. I'm Darren Hunch. I've said it before, I'll say it again. The siren isn't finished until the fat lady stops singing. And tonight, on this program, the one you're tuned to, I'm blowing the siren. Just five minutes ago, my program, the one with me in it, the one in which I appear, the one you're watching now, was handed incredibly vital, some might say incredibly earth-shattering, information about something incredibly vital and incredibly earth-shattering. I'll be back with that story after this break. I'm Aaron Hunch, welcome back humanity. This story involves someone we all love. Someone who's very big, bigger than me, but who is in fact, unlike me, nothing more than an animal. That's right, I said it, you heard me, he's an animal. You know him as Humphrey B. Bear. And I believe this bear is a fraud. That's right, a fraud. We have information that suggests that the so-called Humphrey B. Bear is not who he says he is. He's a bear, of course. He's a bear. I'm not suggesting he isn't. What I'm saying is his name is not Humphrey B. Bear. It's William John Bear. The other name, Humphrey B. Bear, is made up. It's not real. It's not his real name. This program, the one on now, this one, the one where I'm making these allegations, has approached the so-called Mr. Humphrey B. Bear with an invitation to discuss these allegations with me on my program. But not surprisingly, he's refusing to talk. He won't give us any reason for not talking. He's not prepared to talk about why he's not talking. But there's a reason why he can't talk, and he's not talking about that either. If he does talk, we'll tell you. I'm not kidding. No laughing. I'm Darren Hunch. That's tough. Leaving Cosmos, I'm Darren Hunch. Sometimes it really pains me to sit in this chair, particularly when they leave the seat cover off and I have to sit on the pole. It really does. In this industry, the television industry, the industry that I'm in, we're subject to the whims and fancies of a thing called ratings. 
I say whims and fancies because it's an emotive term. Ratings are determined by ordinary little people just like you and other people like you who <laughs> fill out ordinary little books recording their TV viewing for that week. And television programs live or die by the results of those books. But do you ever ask yourself how Mr. McNair Anderson, the ratings man, can get it so right in one week, the week I beat neighbours, and so wrong the rest of the time? And you don't believe me, ask yourself this. When was the last time you saw a ratings book? When was the last time you filled out a ratings questionnaire? And if you're like me, the answer's never. And why? Well, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it right here. I'm going to say it now. And if you don't believe me, I'm saying it. Mr. McNair Anderson is in the pocket of neighbours. That's right. He's related to the Mangles family. Forget neighbours. From now on, I'm calling it McNairbers. Shame. McNairbers. Shame. I'm Darren Hunch. That's right, it. Next on Hunch, we look at the strange case of two men living hundreds of miles apart who've never set eyes on each other in their lives. This is Peter James Williams, 29, of Kalgoorlie, Western Australia. But it doesn't end there. He's 91. He served his country in two world wars and he still lives with his mother in Shepparton, Victoria. But here's a catch. He too is Peter James Williams. So who are we to believe? This Peter James Williams or this Peter James Williams? Something stinks in the state of Denmark. I'm opening a new same file. And both of you are on it. Same, same, same. And if you share the same name with someone else, you better watch your step. I'm Darren Hunt. I hope you're not. Good evening world, good evening universe. I'm Darren Hunt. Earlier this week, I, Darren Hunch, the bearded mongrel, correction, bearded mogul, I exposed the whole television rating system as a scam, a fraud, a con, a hoax, etc. That's right, a fake. Perpetrated by the producers of Neighbours, or should I say, McNeighbours, for the sole purpose of trying to really piss me off. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. McNair Anderson, it won't work. I'm prepared to fight fire with fire. As from tonight, I'm making a cash offer for ratings books. That's right, cash. If you've been asked to fill out a ratings book, then forget the worry of putting a tick in a box. Just contact my producer, the producer of me, me sitting here in this chair. Why? I will pay top dollar. Moolah, mush, 100 big ones. That's right, five lobbies for ratings books in mint condition. This is not a joke. This is investigative journalism. And you don't believe me? Well, I'm going to hold my breath. I'm Darren Hunch. That's ratings. Good evening, universe. I'm Darren Hunch. Sometimes people hold press conferences in confidence and they supply information about sensitive issues and ask the media not to disclose that information. An embargo. Information like about a secret drug operation that could get people killed. What about the person dying or something? Or about a very private, personal matter? But sometimes there are more important things than people's lives, the law and order, than the safety of a country. There's a principle at stake, the principle of ratings, of rating one principle against another. The need on the one hand to respect people's confidence weighed on the other hand against me beating neighbours. We might die, we probably will die. But if I'm to beat McNeighbours, then embargoes must be broken. People must die. Every ratings book has its price. Every dog has its day. That's why I will not be silenced. I'm putting an embargo on embargoes. <laughs> and there it That's dead. The leading police commissioner. I'm Darren Hunch, the bearded mogul. Mogul. Tonight, my wife Jackie told me something secret. Very secret. So secret, she said it was embargoed. Now, whilst I respect my wife Jackie's confidence, I have weighed the public interest in this so-called embargo. And I've decided to tell you Jackie's secret on national television. Tough <laughs> shit, Jackie. My wife Jackie's third cousin removed has piles. I still like to hear that on national television, but embargo em smargo. Oh, there was this other thing. I was rifling through someone's desk the other day and I came across this letter. But that's another embargo. I'm Aaron Hunch. That's life. She's I, Darren Hunch, the part of the airways, the original Blackbeard. 
here, now, on. Through a call, and over the last couple of weeks, I've demonstrated on national television, beyond any shadow of a doubt, documentary proof that the McNair Anderson rating people are in cahoots with the producers of the overrated alleged television show Neighbours. <laughs> They've been trying to novel me. Darren Hunch. Well, it takes more than, than that to keep this old dog from turning into a sow's ear. <laughs> I have managed to obtain exclusively for this show only, here, now, right now, on, first, a special one-off, a copy of the Neighbours scripts for the next six months. That's right. The Neighbours script for six months. And if you don't believe me, have a look at this. A bigger load of fabrication you have never seen. Except maybe for the dolphins on death row story. Heads roll over that one. Well, things like this. Harold gets drunk, loses his licence and drives a stolen car into Mrs Mangles house, wiping out Dez, Jane, Paul, Mrs Mangles, etc. Pathetic. Well, from now on, you'll be able to tune into 107, get the neighbour's storyline, and stay informed with the latest in pop and investment journalism. And if you don't believe me, if you're not really stuck for ratings, well, phooey. I don't know much. That's lots. Good evening, Southeast Asia. I don't know much. We've all heard about the tragedy in China. The deaths, the sight of young students dying, and people being killed, all for the civil right to live in a free, democratic life in a communist state. As you know, I don't get angry over many issues, but this is the one I'm going to make myself angry over. I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it right now, on this program, we've all got to do something to change what's going on in China. If nobody else says, I will. I'm going to do something I've never done before. At least, not on this program, certainly not during a non-ratings period. What I'm going to do, as a protest against Deng, Feng Dao, Chao, Yang Bella, and the other Chinese leaders, I'm going to resign. That's right, you heard me. I'm going to resign, right here, next Thursday. If Zhang Wangqing and Deng Zheng Hao and all those other boat people, those so-called leaders, don't go to their senses, I made it. I'm giving Bung Zing Dong and his mob two weeks. That's two weeks. And that's what they're doing. We know students. I'm gone. Take from me. You won't see me for dust. That's all I want to say. Three weeks. If Dung and Zong Zo and his so-called collective don't get their act together, I'm off. Off like a bride's nighty. I'm serious. They're in deep shit. Four weeks and I'm off. I don't hunch. That's life. the original Blackbeard, here, now, on. You recall that over the last couple of weeks, I've demonstrated on national television, beyond any shadow of a doubt, documentary proof that the McNair Anderson rating people are in cahoots with the producers of the overrated alleged television show Neighbours. They've been trying to novel me. Darren Hunch. Well, it takes more than, than that to keep this old dog from turning into a sow's ear. I have managed to obtain exclusively for this show only, here, now, right now, on, first, a special one-off, a copy of the Neighbours scripts for the next six months. That's right, the Neighbours script for six months. And if you don't believe me, have a look at this. A bigger load of fabrication you have never seen. Except maybe for the dolphins on death row story. Heads roll over that one. Well, things like this. Harold gets drunk, loses his licence and drives a stolen car into Mrs Mangles' house, wiping out Dez, Jane, Paul, Mrs Mangles, etc. Pathetic. Well, from now on, you'll be able to tune into 107, get the Neighbours storyline and stay informed with the latest in pop and investment in journalism. And if you don't believe me, if you're not really stuck for ratings, well... <coughs> phooey. I don't know much. That's lots. <laughs> Good evening, Southeast Asia. I don't hunch. We've all heard about the tragedy in China. The deaths, the sight of young students dying and people being killed, all for the civil right to live in a free, democratic life in a communist state. As you know, I don't get angry over many issues, but this is the one I'm going to make myself angry over. I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it right now, on this program, we've all got to do something to change what's going on in China. If nobody else says, I will. I'm going to do something I've never done before. At least not on this program, certainly not during a non ratings period. What I'm going to do as a protest against Deng, Feng Dao, Chao, Yang Bella and the other Chinese leaders, I'm going to resign. That's right, you heard me. I'm going to resign right here, 
next Thursday. <laughs> Zhang, Wang, Ching and Deng, Zheng, Hao and all those other boat people, those so-called leaders, don't go to their senses. I made it. I'm giving Bung Zing Dong and his mob two weeks. That's two weeks. I don't know what they're doing. Who knows students? I'm gone. Take from me, you won't see me for dust. That's all I'm going to say. Three weeks. If Dung Zong Zo and his so-called collective don't get their act together, I'm off. Off like a bride's nighty. I'm serious. They're in deep shit. Four weeks and I'm off. I don't hunch. That's life. Bonjour. Je suis Darren Hunt. A couple of days ago, the French people celebrated Bastille Day. Well, on behalf of the Australian people, I'd like to extend my tongue to the French government. <laughs> what I expect when those arrogant French bastards come to our backyards with their nuclear tests and blow up our boats in New Zealand and give everyone the shits and then they want us to celebrate the world and some people. As far as Bastille Day goes, they can stick their Bastille Day right up their derriere. If French people are expecting a gift or a car, then forget it. If you don't believe me, well, I hope the Eiffel Tower falls over, the cheese goes off, your wine turns to water, the women learn to have more sense than to go to bed with you and your homosexual lot, and you stop breeding, and Maurice Chevalier is a woman anyway, and the French language is a stupid language, and all of Paris is a dump, and French cuisine is the pits, and I wouldn't feed it to a dog, and French paintings are there beyond my own lot, and the plume de maton on my fred's legs of my mind, and who the bloody hell do you think you are anyway? <laughs> Dad, and freedom's just another word for nothing left to lose and never trust a man who eats nails and you never would have won the war without us. And don't believe me, this we, Darren Hunch. Say la vie. Good evening, so-called viewers. I'm Darren Hunch. With the so-called new age getting all the headlines, reincarnation is all the rage. We have to ask ourselves one important question. What about past lives? Take the case of a certain Mr. Glenn McMaster, that's him there, who claims to have been a certain Walter Prendergast, that's him there, <laughs> in a previous life. That's right, a previous life. Well, the hunch team have found that the former Walter Prendergast, that's him, died leaving a huge unpaid tax bill. That's right, tax bill. Should Mr. McMaster, that's him there, now be called upon to pay the debt he left the taxpayers in his previous life as Walter Prendergast? That's him there. Or does he get away scot-free? just because he died. A difficult question, but one that has to be asked. The fact remains that this criminal tax evader left the public with a huge burden in 1951. And who pays? You and I. But it doesn't end there. Going back even further, Mr McMaster, that's him there, admits that he was a pirate, that's right, a pirate in the 17th century. As you know, piracy was and is illegal. Should Mr McMaster, that's him there, now face prosecution for his barbaric crimes on the high seas? Should he be allowed to hold a gun licence? Do you really want a pirate living next door to you? Someone who had a parrot on their shoulder as a neighbour? You were the judge. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. Ancient Egyptians, Nero, Jack the Ripper, Brutus, Genghis Khan, you could be living next door to any of them. You could be any of them. Shame, the lot of you, shame. That's past lives. I'm Darren Hunch, and I've never been anybody else. Good night. Good evening, Milky Way. Now, sometimes it's not easy sitting here. Sometimes it's not easy doing this job with petty rules, petty regulations getting in the way. Take, for example, this afternoon, two elderly people sitting watching TV in their suburban lounge rooms savagely murdered. That's right, a gang of criminals break into their home, savagely chop and maim their victims and leave bits of the body scattered all over the front lawn of their Parramatta home. <laughs> now it really stinks, we can't tell you the names of the victims. That's right, we're forbidden by police protocol from releasing the names of the victims until after the next of kin are notified. This can take weeks, months. Well, the hunch team have gone one better than the New South Wales police. We've been doing our research and we happen to know that the daughter of the murdered elderly couple is holidaying in Queensland, Sherrod Mirage, on her honeymoon with her husband, Brian. And she's watching television, watching this program, the one you're watching right now with millions of others, this program here right now, right in the restaurant. Well, Cheryl Russell, Nate Fortescue of 25 Eliza Court, Gunawini, your parents, who we can't name for ethical reasons, have been savagely murdered and dismembered by a psychopathic gang of convicted criminals Tough. You're the first here on Hunch. That's life. Good evening, universe. 
I don't hunt. Tonight, we look at a great menace in our society. They're worse than doll cheats, worse than chunky car dealers, they're even worse than the mail order rip-off merchants. Now, the frightening thing is, <laughs> the chances are that all of us, that's you, that's me, that's you and me, probably know at least one of them. And they cause untold distress, embarrassment to their victims, and it's all too easy to fall into their clever trap. It even happened to one of the hunch crew. I'm talking about people who cheat at Scrabble. <laughs> My mother-in-law. I ask you, how was I to know that this word, this word here, was not a proper word? Extremely. <laughs> Extremely. She claimed it was a type of native bird. And I believed her. Extremism. I was con. I was humiliated. But at least I had the guts to go on national television and expose this mother-in-law. I ask you, how many other people will be able to trust their dear relatives again? Just what are words worth? I don't hunch, and I'm worth 14 points for the triple score. <laughs> Greetings, Earthlings. I'm Darren Hunch. Tonight, I'm ripping the lid off the biggest scam I've ever seen. That's right, a rip-off so monstrous, so huge, so mind-bogglingly enormous, a mysterious person of no fixed address, no tax file number, no credit rating, a person who is not even listed in the phone book. This person has convinced millions of gullible, ordinary people to give up their hard-earned dollars. And what do they get in return? Nothing. Zilch. Nothing but empty promises. This person has set up a global extortion racket to leech the lifeblood from innocent victims. And I'm pulling the plug on him right now, right here, right now, on this, my show, here now. <laughs> Who is this person? This leech, this so-called scum. He goes by many names. And the biggest of all, God. <laughs> God, Mada, Krishna, Jehovah, Allah, or just plain, God. That's right. And who is he? This man with no Christian name, no address, uses a number of aliases to conceal his true identity. Well, no one knows. And where is he? His representatives claim he's everywhere. But when we ask for an interview, they decline. Well, right now, I'm issuing an invitation, an open invitation to this so-called God person to come on my show tomorrow night to answer some questions that we'll have the right to know the answers to. I don't hunch. That's the meaning of life. <laughs> In Cosmos, I don't hunch. Tonight, we look at another disturbing trend, another example of the dangerous, depraved rubbish that's being sold as children's toys. This is what I'm talking about. It's called the Darren Doll. Ugly little bugger, isn't he? In fact, I'd say it was the ugliest thing I've ever seen. And believe me, I've seen some ugly things. Who'd want to give it to a child? And it'd give them nightmares. But that's not all. But what happens when you press this button on his back? Shameful, disgusting, unbelievable, utterly unforgivable. I couldn't have put it better myself. In fact, it's just how I describe its irritating little whine. Irritating whine doesn't go away, even when you do this. I won't be silenced that easily. You can't even build a living daylight out of it. Shame. And it still won't shut up. I ask you, is this the kind of thing we should be encouraging in this country? Well, thank heavens, it's only a toy. Imagine if it was real. I'm here at home. That's not. I was actually really angry when people sell shoddy goods and services, make all sorts of promises and don't deliver. What is worse is when they suck in unsuspecting members of the public. And to add insult to injury, those people are often high-placed political leaders. That's right, high-placed political leaders. Graham Pamela stumbled onto one such hotbed of misleading and deceptive conduct. If you don't believe me, have a look at this story. You won't believe it. We just came and knocked on our door. A, a very nice man. Mm, he told us all about the organisation, what we would get out of it, how it was a good time to join. Offered us the world. Mm. And you got nothing. No, no, no we got nothing, no. Only promises. Mm. Gary and Cheryl McGuinness have had their lives shattered by a deal that went tragically wrong. A contract full of fine promises which they claim has been blatantly dishonoured, costing them everything they've both worked for. <laughs> Gary, when did you first join the Labour Party? <laughs> and what promises did they make? 
that we would be personally instrumental in ending the mine and mining and the export of uranium and the nuclear arms race. And were you? Oh, no, no. <laughs> what other undertakings did they give you? Uh, well, me. that we would be responsible for the equitable redistribution of wealth. Mm. And were you? Mm. Not as yet, Not no. Yet, no. Anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, uh, land rights, mm. conservation. American bases. They promised you all that. Yes, yes. yes. So what in fact happened? Oh, well, Hawkey got in. And so an outraged Gary and Cheryl McGuinness brought their case to us. We decided to have a little chat with Robert James Lee Hawke. Robert James Lee Hawke? Ah, right. Mr. Hawke? <laughs> Mr. Oh, Hawke? Bugger off out of here. Mr. Hawke, <laughs> just nah, ask you a few get those hammers out of here. Mr. Hawke, nah. I just want to ask you. Piss off. <laughs> Go on. Mr. Hawke? Oh, don't piss off. Mr. Hawke? Oh, right. oh, 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 <laughs> Mr. Hawke, you made people promises and they voted for you. What's your response? Get <laughs> Leave me new models. I don't hunch. I won't be silenced. Won't be stopped. Won't shut up. There's almost <laughs> one every day. It's enough to make you sick. They cause untold misery to innocent people, they ruin lives, they waste money, they cost people a lot in terms of pain, effort and emotion. And for what? I'm talking about shame files. That's right, the shame <laughs> files. The file that humiliates people just because they happen to get a bit drunk and drive someone home or sneak into the country and live off other people's taxes or put dolphins on death row. That's right, the shame file. The file that shames people. And for no reason whatsoever, except maybe for ratings. To put this on ratings for no good reason whatsoever. Well, I reckon the shame file stinks. I think it's gone low enough. Shame, shame file. Shame. I'm so disgusted. Disgusted is the word I use because it's the first word that came to my head. I'm so disgusted with this so called shame file. There's only one thing to do with it. I'm putting this shame file in the sludge file. That's right. The shame file going straight into the sludge file. Was it the other way around? The sludge file going into the shame file. Any details? Shame. Shame, sludge, sludge. I don't mind. That's life. <laughs> Eating posterity, I don't hunch. I've said it before and I'll say it again. But eating posterity, I don't hunch. <laughs> shame, McNever's shame. Shame, sale of the century, shame. Why? <laughs> because these cheap shows that have to be up against me, same a hunch time, same a hunch channel, resort to explicit. Sexual exploitation just to try and win ratings points from this bearded mongrel, mogul. Well, I won't be a party to it. I say no to scantily clad girls in bikinis, holding their breasts. Breasts like melons, firm, large, round, rubbing in your... Excuse me. Face. I won't have a bar. Bar of it. <laughs> Women should be treated equally, almost the same as men. And just to prove I'm serious, we here at Hunch, the show you're watching, the show with me in it, the one with me in it now, the one with me, it's compare. When you're home, Hunch, Hunch me, this show here, we're decided to show that we're equal opportunists, opportunists, sexists. We're engaged in all female crew. That's right, we've engaged in all female crew. Non sexist, non exploitive, non discriminatory, nonsense, no, nonsensical. That's not all, excuse me. Me and my all-female crew want to get around whatever feels good. If they want to get around in little tiny tops and little shorts and little singlets, and if you stand right on top of you can see right down the... Excuse me. That's fine. Any sort of loose clothing that they want to work in, that's fine by me. We won't be compromised here at Hunch. I won't cater the animals out there. I'm not an animal. I'm a human being. No sex on television. That's what I say, and I'm standing firm on that one. I'm at Hunch. That's life. In the universe, I don't hunch. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Fair enough. As long as he wasn't trespassing. It's free country. However, Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. We had to ask, was Humpty Dumpty out of his mind on drugs? I was a little surprised if he was. 
who sold them to him. But it doesn't end there. All the king's horses, all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Isn't that a sad indictment on the rescue services? Just what kind of attitudes are we fostering in innocent young children? Later on the show, I'll be exposing some more of these anarchistic, irresponsible propaganda that's disguised as the so-called nursery rhymes. And you want your children, your children's children, your children's children's children to be watching. I don't hunch, and I'm sticking my thumb into pies and pulling out plums, and what a good boy am I. Welcome back, I don't hunch. Jack and Jill went up the hill to fetch a pail of water. Why did two children have to go up a hill to get water to drink? I'll tell you why. Because the Maine's water supply was polluted by illegal dumpers that I've named in this lunch file. That's not all. That's not where the story ends. Because as it happens, Jack fell down, broke his crown, and Jill... Remember Jill? Jill came tumbling after. Now, that might sound like the natural consequence of two small, unsupervised children struggling with the weight of a heavy bucket of water, but that's not the end of the story. Not by a long shot. I can now reveal that in court today, Jack was charged with lodging a false third-party accident claim. That's right, third-party accident claim. A claim that was witnessed by his alleged relatives who weren't even in the country when the alleged accident happened. It's enough to make you sick. Nursery rhymes, nursery rhymes by foot. As far as I'm concerned, they're nothing but a recipe for social disaster. But remember that the next time you let some lovable old auntie infect your children with lies. I'm not being the big bad wolf, I'm just doing what has to be done. I don't hunch, and I'm sitting down beside you, frightening a little bit smuffets away. <laughs> the universe, drinkers and non-drinkers, sober and not sober, current affairs hosts and not current affairs hosts. I don't hunch. Some time ago, on another current affairs show in a not too distant television station, a man whom I will not name for ethical reasons, Let's just say he's a not-too-distant relative of Terry Willisey. <laughs> filled in for the regular compare of that show, who, for the sake of protecting your identity, I will call Yana W, pronounced we in Eastern European countries. This man came on air in a condition which, to say the least, was very, very strange. He said he was sick, and personally, I think it is sick. He ummed, he yard, he dribbled, he giggled, he slurred, his eyes glazed over, swung in his chair, couldn't even read the auto club. Cute. <laughs> All a sad indictment of journalistic integrity. You know what the saddest thing about the story is? The next day, the television ratings on that same show doubled. And I... Wait, like, damn it, is that true? They double the next day? You're... Jesus, whip, you're kidding. <laughs> How many... 20 point... <sighs> I don't hunch. I'll be back in a moment. 20 points, you've got it, no joke. Are you sure this is going to work, Derek? <laughs> Sounds like you're up from before. Technical problem. Coming up soon, the story of a pederast who performed hair transplants on young children. But first, I'm going to scull an entire bottle of tequila, some cream of mont, and some of the blue one. And then some of the pink. And I'll tell you this right now, right here, th from me, Hunch, Darren Hunch, Hunch by name, Hunch by nature, I wouldn't be the least surprised if you got really disgusted, really offended, and rang the seven switchboard. Ring it now, the number's on the bottom of the screen, there it is. <laughs> or if you're in the country, try the toll-free number, hearing below. Or maybe if you told your friends about it tomorrow and told them how disgusting it was. That's how disgusting it's going to be. I'll be back with more in just a mouthful. <laughs> Well, there you have it. I'm sorry to have put you through that hour of television. But the mystery still remains. Why is that sort of stuff paraded as top-rating evening entertainment when my great talents as a comedian come humorous are wasted, ignored? Except for my side-splittingly funny half-hour of current affairs. Why, indeed, I leave you with that mystery. I'm Alfred Hunchcock. Get it? <laughs>